Hi everybody, I'm Paula, uh, one of the directors of Earth Moves, and I'm really honoured and blessed to be interviewing um, my friend Maureen Teresa, who I've known for a long time. Um, we always have really interesting conversations about a variety of topics which we, we're both interested in. Maureen and I have had many conversations about unconscious bias and that will be the subject of this video. Just to introduce Maureen, she has a master's degree in women's studies. She is a dance anthropologist who's been published in a variety of journals. Um, she studies uh, different cultural dances and makes comparisons and highlights the contributions of the different cultures involved and often some of them are hidden from her story. So um, yeah, Maureen Teresa, she's a, a fabulous dancer as well. She, she's also a practitioner of dance and a teacher of dance and she's collected a lot of her information um, in this way too by emerge, amazing immersion uh, into uh, different cultures and really thinking about it and generously sharing that information. So Maureen, hi. Hi. You, could you just give us a, a quick kind of um, beginner's guide to, to what unconscious bias actually is? Um, it ha This is something that goes across the board. It's not just about race, but it could be about biases against different groups of people, different age groups, uh, nationalities, whatever. I think just basically you um, form a shorthand, um, a sort of a shorthand acknowledgement, or you, you're trying to work out what this person's like, but you, it's a generalization. So you might say, all men are this or all women are like this you might have had an experience or it just comes down through cultural expression through education or institutions um as i say it happens with every everybody every ethnicity every group but it's just basically making assumptions or you have prejudices, prejudices against people but not on based on anything concrete um, and it, as I say, it can come down through institutions, through education, media, um, books that you read. That's basically it. Um, and if you're talking about in terms of, say, the UK, for example, because we've had, say, an empire, the way that you either control people or want people to think a certain way, you, in you introduce certain concepts or ideas which gets filtered down to the population and into the language and people make assumptions that way. I suppose it serves like the dominant groups in society as well. Um, for some people to believe that they're inferior or they're less worthy than, than other groups. I, I notice um, when I'm with Pete, because he's you know white, middle-class Southerner, that uh, it gets a different type of reaction than I do, even though um, we may, you know, get said the same things. It's the person's micro expressions and body language and things like that that's kind of giving me the message that, um, you know, there's something they don't like about me, that they don't know me, mm -hmm. um, based on what, you know, their fantasy of who I am. I think um, we lose the opportunity to really connect with someone else when we're assuming uh, all kinds of things about them because of their gender or their colour or, you know, class or, or whatnot. Because yeah. no mm -hmm. one's two-dimensional like that. I think you raise a very good point about the, the, the um, assumptions are made about someone because of their gender or because of their class, because of their accent or the language. Yeah, it goes across the board. It's not just about race. It can be gender and it can be class. It can be even the sort of job that you have or the area where you live. Again, some of these may be constructed um, by by the ruling classes or the government, you know, who's everything in power. There's an agenda behind it um, because it's about controlling people or to get 
control of resources, for example, or get people to adhere to certain principles or practices, etc. It's. I think Black Lives Matter has done a lot of positive work on getting people to realise these things and point out to white people um, the injustices that happen um, based on race um, and, and helped everyone to kind of examine that. Have you got any tips for people to reflect on their own behaviour to see if they've actually got um, negative biases about other groups? It is um, the way that mm-hmm. people can ask themselves, I, I mean, am I really connecting with this person as another human being or am I saying oh the black so they must be a b and c or the gay so they must be you know well I suppose yeah I I think well this is something that all of us should be doing I think it's avoiding generalizations um because any you know you can be brought up in so for example we could have been brought up in China for example that would have been our lot in life been brought up in China so we make we are born with cultural ideas concepts from that country so that tells you that culture is something that you learn it's acquired so you can't make generalizations about um, people because you could be born in any part of the world and you learn certain things so therefore it's something that can be unlearned and generalization yes it can be shorthand you can use it as a shorthand to find sort of a um, you're where you, where you are on the page, so to speak. But you've got to remember, people are individuals. Cultures are different, varied, um, you know, different expressions of, of, of life. So you've got to ask yourself, am I making a generalisation about this person? Yes, maybe in the culture, people do X, Y and Z, but this person is an individual. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be like that. So you've got to ask yourself, is this person a person or am I general making generalizations about them so you've got to check yourself I think ask I yourself we all yeah. have everybody's got to do it and, and I do try and make it since I've been made aware of this in the past few years I've well I've always been quite conscious of it with like doing mm-hmm. women's studies in the 90s yeah. and things like that I had a good training um in, in this sort of thing but um I think now a lot of people are recognizing um for example the environmental movement is, is like the people that i see in groups always white with old people affluent people middle class and um someone came um a mixed race queer young man came um to one of our events and said he felt relieved that i was just kind of normal and um, just the way I am and he felt like he could be himself and he didn't feel like that in other groups of being because although people have been friendly he'd been very mm-hmm. aware of the unconscious bias about his differences to them and when people do that to me you know I, I don't really feel comfortable around them you know I don't, I don't feel like very confident when someone does that in their company no. i think so mm-hmm. sorry. sorry yeah i was going to say um talking about the middle class environmental activi- activism i think a lot of acti- activists tend to come from middle class backgrounds because they've got the space and the time and perhaps the money yeah. so they're not living in a sense of um, survival a lot of working class people don't have the luxury or the time to to be activists it, it's a struggle um so therefore when you're talking about those people who really are impacted by environmental, you know, disasters and issues, it's usually those right at the very bottom, the poor, we're talking about people of colour, black people, for example, um, and their livelihoods are being encroached by, say, for example, the Sahara Desert. You've got uh, issues in Bangladesh, for example. You've got stuff going on in, in uh, Brazil with the cutting of down of the rainforest. Up in uh, Canada, North America, you've got the um, melting of the... Yeah, Arctic Circle, those issues are going to impact them the most. And they probably are the ones who we should be learning from because on the, they're on very much on, on the edge. Um, they are actually the, the activists in, in, you know, they're living, they are living activism because 
they are trying to find ways to to uh, combat this. But for so us, fair yeah. because people of colour produce the least pollution, but are going to be impacted the most by climate change. But I completely agree on a spiritual level that as well that Indigenous people seem to have a lot of connection with the earth and seem to do a lot of like ceremonies and things like that to you know maybe keep things going on, on some sort of spiritual level um but they just know how to live and i think um yeah they're just in this moment um enjoying themselves a lot of the time i think i think because the thousands of years they've had um experience of the environment of the environment and they know what works what doesn't work and they've obviously made mistakes and because we've had industrialization which takes on the earth as opposed to giving it back mm -hmm. this is where we've got the problem and there's this pressure for a lot of developing countries to become more developed but that's going to be at the expense of the environment this is the problem so you've got a catch-22 situation and the West, because they've done the damage now, they're saying to the developing countries, oh, you don't, you can't do, you can't use the, you know, petrol, you can't use coal, you can't do this, you need clean energy. But hang on a minute, didn't you just do that to become industrialised? And now you're telling us that we can't do that in order to become much more, you know, richer, developed, more educated. It's so that's the problem. It's mostly white... Um from people who, who practice permaculture which is a shame because um you know other groups could do with some free food and you know um all the other things that come with growing your own food and um you know adding to biodiversity and um just learning like self-sufficiency techniques um but going back to what I said before, I think because of this unconscious bias thing is people just feel on the end of that um, kind of white middle class like sense of properness. And, you know, I feel like that um, sometimes in some groups that if I just me being me, it's a bit problematic. I feel like. Well, well it's, it's a class, it's an issue of class as well. And I think what you're, also, what you're, dis you're discussing about the white middle class can equally happen to uh, middle class people from different um, areas of the of the planet. You get your affluent middle class groups in Africa and Asia, South America, and they often show the same disdain. You know, well, horrible, attitude to the, isn't it? We shouldn't you know. treat other people like that. We shouldn't treat nature like that. We should value. You. You know, mm -hmm. the peace that we all bring to this, this life, you know, we all have something to contribute. Yes, we um, do. But and I think we, we're, we're moving further and further away from the environment, aren't we? We're trying yeah, to make ourselves so right, a bit more artificial. You, you were so right when you said we need to listen to the Indigenous people because, you know, they, they just have a, 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 a wealth of information that um, we really need right now because not only living like this is destroying the environment it is most people have mental health challenges in um in westernized you know in, in um, advanced capitalist countries um a lot of people actually with with money and um you know uh, status still more happy because they don't know the value of the true value of things like the sunset and um, our beautiful flower is and taking time you know to connect with other people and, and mm -hmm. honor the gifts na nature brings um you know to me i think that's amazing imagine living like that but but a lot of people look down on them and and think that they're uh, you know childish but i think they probably think we're childish we we are the ones that are doing stupid things. The problem as well is this notion, as you said, about people, indigenous people seen as uh, being seen as, prim you know, childish. Well, I was going to say this word primitive. This is what it boils down to. 
they're not primitive they're 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 complex people the societies may seem simple but they're quite complex even very, very complex i would say not, not quite very complex and ancient because the traditions have come down for a long time and they've survived over time and they these indigenous groups of people they listen to themselves they've got a deep connection with the, the, the earth with animals the ecosystem they understand what's going on we don't if we're living in this, in an urbanized area where we don't have access to the green 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 space or we can't grow plants or even have animals or pets or whatever we just we, we lose that connection we don't see the whole whole picture and i was watching this really good um documentary on the origins of music from Africa, the Afri African diaspora with mu the, the music and how it's traveled. And you've got instruments and music which can contain, they, they, no, they're, sorry, there are rituals in some parts of um, the East Africa where you can sing a song or play a piece of music and then you tap into the, um, the, the unconsciousness, the unconscious brain and you do prophecies or you see the future it's, it's just something that's triggered in the brain I don't know how they do it and somebody can actually sit down and, and you know predict this is what you should be doing they can give advice because they're almost in a, a dream state yeah exactly. and this is through music so, yeah you know while everyone here is like spending all their lives cleaning the house and working and blah 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 they're in these rich psychological like um narratives and dialogues um and, and actually on that level are a lot more developed you know than we could imagine maybe exactly but surely then that is the most because this life is you know we're only here for a little bit um it's like the materials way of looking at things it's like oh this is all there is so let's get as much as we can and snort loads of cocaine drink loads of champagne and whatnot and have a, buy loads of tacky furniture to prove that you so but there's another easier way there's an easier way of getting that um you want to get this high you can go back yeah to parts of the world and get that without having to spend all that money on champagne or cocaine or whatever as we all know i mean you know in some ways i like things like shoes and stuff not as much as i used to because i'm getting older but you know, no, you're not. I try and get, I try and get like, used things now. Um, I try not to buy anything new anymore, because uh, it just worries me that it's just consuming um, too much, you know, of the environment just for vanity's sake. But um, it, you know, I might think, oh, I've got all that belly dance costume, isn't that? I'm like, oh, I've had that. I feel great and I do feel great and then 10 minutes later if I if I've been feeling empty it will just come back whereas if I'm outside in the community um you know really having positive regard for everyone you know no matter what seeing their inner light then um I'm having a good time really connecting with people rather than trying to assess am I better than you because I, I actually feel that sometimes some people are they, they, they're so mm. into dominance and hierarchy that it's like they're like dogs like um, well dogs are nicer than people I know that uh they're like oh, oh can I am I better than you yeah I'm trying to like you can see them like trying to work it out and I'm like whatever you know um if that's what what you want to feel like you feel like that but I'm not going to play that game but you see, good for you. See, the biggest, biggest irony is, guess which is the most equal, equal egalitarian society in the world? I don't know what. I should know, but I it's don't the, know. It's the gatherer hunter or the hunter gatherer society. Well, yeah. Because men and women contribute to the, the, their society. Women are valued because they, you know, they are able to produce food, find food. Men, the Messiah, absolutely. Obviously, hunt. Some of them hunt. 
they do they work together so there's no oh well you're a man you're a woman you're less than me they all work as a group some societies work very well because they they have that cooperation maybe we've lost it because we've been told this uh, capitalist system you know it's like the apex so you make money yeah and that's all it is and this is where we get the disconnection we are not valuing ourselves or each other because we contribute not because of money you know because of money it's because we're adding value communication cooperation cohesion within the group and that's a different thing altogether I'm worried you'll have to come you down know, it's, and, it's, um, and, um, based on money and do workshop and just talk because you know you're so wise just just to finish oh. off it you know when someone um you know is you feel like this unconscious bias going on it's kind of like passive aggressive like kind of a feeling that you've got that the person is playing this dominant game if you're black maybe it's because the person's racist or you know if, if they're like classist or something like that and then making like little remarks what do you think you can do even just like an internal process to stop you know the attempts at disempowerment it's it's really difficult because um depending on where you live so for example me being black female this is something you always are brought up with. You always are aware that you are going to be treated differently because of your skin colour and, and also because of your gender. And obviously, as you get older, there's, there's issues of age. There's all this issue of class as well. Um, it's difficult. I, I think what different people react differently. Um, you can only stand your ground and, and just keep calm and carry on. You know it's, you're going to have this. And for some people of colour, they try and prove themselves. They go one better. They say, well, I know I've got to fight against this. So I'm going to get educated. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure I've got everything together. So the, you've got the receipt. I'm educated. I know what I'm talking about. You can, you know, keep this. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight, but I'm going to show you. By just being yourself, by producing what you need to do when you're at work, you know, when you're um, talking about something, you just prove to them, well, yeah, I'm, I'm human being. And it's you who's who's got the problem, not me. So you can just, just ignore them. Or you can challenge them, but challenge them in a different way, not sort of confront them. There are different ways you can obviously, um, you know, be an activist in a sense of let's challenge the status quo for events, fundraising events, through networking, through lectures, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but sometimes you might be preaching to the converted. But I just think be consistent, you know, like a broken record. Don't let them, you know, dominate you. Just say, well, you no, know, it's just shame that you think that way. But, you know, I'm sorry to say this, but I am homo sapiens just like you are. You know, get over it, so to speak. But as I said, there's different ways, different methods uh, of, of, of trying to overcome that. And I think, like, for example, the LGBT community will have their strategies. Yeah, yeah. Um, black people, people of colour, Muslim people, Jewish people, they've all got different ways of approaching it. So I think you should learn from them, those groups as well, see how they approach it and ask them questions um, about how to, you know, overcome unconscious bias that's great Maureen and that that's really great advice as well thank you so much for sharing um that really important information um really enjoy talking to you as always yes really enjoyed you talking to you yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah let's chat again soon and you look after yourself and thank you so much no, thank you it's us. been a pleasure bye in the next one bye Bye.